myself Dr. Pallavi Rai Lavhale and I am going to teach you the unit 4 of BP 405T. And today we are going to discuss about the definition, classification, properties and test for identification of the glycosides. So, to begin with what are these glycosides? So, basically glycosides are any type of chemical constituent present in the plants, but the difference from other ingredients is that generally it occurs in combination with a glucose or a glycone moiety means a sugar moiety generally which is a monosaccharide. So, monosaccharide can be a 5 membered monosaccharide or a 6 membered monosaccharide. And due to this presence of the uh, sugar moiety, what happens is that many times the A glycone part in case it is very, very uh, lipophilic in nature and uh, hydrophobic in nature, then the addition of a sugar moiety increases its hydrophobic nature and helps in proper you can say absorption and distribution in the body. So, a balance is there generally lipophilic drugs can easily be absorbed, but in the stomach itself during the digestion itself at that time if a sugar moiety is attached then the absorption and assimilation of such compounds become much more easier. In the liver what happens that in the liver they go and they break down and we have the glycone and the A glycone part. The A glycone part normally acts and shows its uh, action, pharmacological action. Now, if you look at the chemistry of these drugs, so basically a glycoside, it is a molecule where the sugar moiety is, uh, is uh, added through its anomeric carbon to another group via a glycosidic bond. Okay. So, what happens that if I take the structure of a sugar, it is something like this, I am not drawing the entire structure. If I look at this and we have different H and OH groups attached at different parts here. So, this is our anomeric carbon. Okay. So, now this anomeric carbon is having one hydroxy group. Now, if we imagine any other A glycone moiety, for example, it is having a alcoholic group, okay. it is having OH group. Now, what happens that the hydrogen of this A glycone and OH of this gly uh, glucose, they bind together and we uh, they sorry, uh, they are removed through dehydration and this oxygen, it comes and it bound to this, this anomeric carbon atom forming a glycosidic linkage. So, this oxygen and this anomeric carbon, they are coming together to form a glycosidic linkage with the removal of 2 H and 1 oxygen that is H 2 O. So, we have the dehydration taking place with the formation of the glycoside. A glycoside bond is a certain type of chemical bond that joins a sugar to another molecule. Specifically, a glycosidic is bond is formed between the hemiacetyl groups. Okay? This is the hemiacetyl structure which I have shown of the saccharide or molecular derived uh, from a saccharide and the hydroxyl group of the alcohol. The sugar group is known as the glycone while the A sugar group is known as the non sugar group is known as the A glycone or the genin. It is also known as the genin. Now, what are the physicochemical properties of glycosides in general? They are colorless solids, amorphous in nature and non-volatile. They give positive reactions with molished reagent and felling reagent after hydrolysis. So, Molish test and Felling's test are tests for carbohydrates. So, they are given positive in case we hydrolyze this glycosides with treatment with either HCl, we can easily break the glycosidic linkage and then if we perform the Molish test or the Felling test, then glycosides will generally give a positive test. The water soluble compounds, uh, they are generally water uh, soluble in nature and they are insoluble in organic solvents, the reason being the sugar moiety. However, sometimes if the sugar moiety, uh, sorry, if the A glycone moiety is very, very heavy in nature, then it can be soluble in the organic solvents as well. Generally, they have a bitter taste, though they contain the sugars, they have the bitter taste and they are odorless except in case of saponin, sometimes the odor exists. 
Now, we come to the classification of this uh, the glycosides. First, we will go to the classification and then uh, depending upon different categories, we will look at the identification tests. So, this classification is you can say one of the uh, most uh, crude type of classification, we are just based on the glycosidic linkage, the bond between glycone and a glycone, we decide which type of glycoside is present. So, for example, I told you that this is the structure, hemiacetal structure of the glucose and we have a hydrogen and a uh, hydroxy group present here. If in case we have a OH group which is there along with the A glycone part and this H and OH bind together, we have the formation of H2O, but the bonding taking bonding is taking place between carbon and oxygen. Okay. So, this type of glycoside is known as a O glycoside, the glycosidic linkage is formed where oxygen, uh, the A glycone oxygen is linked to the sugar part, then it is known as O glycoside. So, the example is the senocytes which is present in the senna plant. The second one is the S glycoside. So, if I take this same example, if I replace this O with the S, if I write here S, okay. So, what happens that this bonding now becomes like this, okay. So, what is happening? Oxygen has replaced sulfur. So, here the A glycone is having sulfur group and the binding is taking at the sulfur end. That is why it is known as the S glycoside and the example is synegrin. If I talk about the third category where S is replaced by nitrogen and we have the bonding C N, then it is known as a nitrogen or N glycoside and the example are all the nucleosides which are present in the DNA, they are the example of N glycosides. And lastly, the C glycosides, here the bonding takes place between the carbon, carbon and the example for this is alloene which is obtained from the aloe vera. So, these are the basic classification of glycosides based upon the type of glycosidic linkage. Now, it can be also classified based on the type of the glycone part. If it is a glucose, if it is a rhamnose, if it is a digit digitoxose, if it is a glucose and rhamnose combination or a rhamnose and glucose combination, it means the order of attachment of these disaccharides. Okay. So, based on that also we can classify the different types of these uh, glycosides. Then based on the therapeutic effect just like alkaloids, then what is the pharmacological action? So, generally it can be a, a drug which is acting as a cardiotonic or it is used in the treatment of congestive heart failure or as a cardiac muscle stimulator. For example, the digitalis glycosides like digoxin, digitoxin, digitoxin, vobane which is present in strophanthus gratus or k strophanthin which is found in strophanthus combi. They are more or less isomers of each other having a common cardiac glycoside structure, but their main pharmacological action is the same that in the treatment of CHF. Then they can be laxatives like senocytes, alloin, cascarocytes which all have the property of either acting as a purgative or a laxative or a cathartic. Then they can be analgesics, for example, salicin, which is present in salic streak. They can be anti-inflammatory, for example, in glycerizin or leco rice. Now we come to the next type of classification, which is the most elaborate, and if we need to study the plants in detail, then we have to go for this classification. So, in this, the first category is that of the saponin glycosides. So, saponin glycosides are those glycosides which have a natural detergent property. It means that when you are mixing it with water, it produces froth or foam. Okay. So, when this kind of foamy nature is there, just like a soap, that is why the name is saponin. And the first time it, this name was given for the soap wort plant which is also known as saponaria and this root was is used as a 
soap by the people in at uh, in the ancient times that is why uh, it as it was producing the froth and after that a cleansing action was seen because of it it was generally used as a soap material okay so this drug was the first one which was ca categorized as a saponin in today's time these saponins are further classified into two types the examples i'll give first one is licorice which is also known as muleti or glyceriza and the second one is dioscorea now what is the classification this licorice it, it belongs to the triterpenoidal category and this triterpenoidal category has five cyclic structures if we count we have the pentacyclic structure okay so this pentacyclic structure is present in the triterpenoidal saponin a glycones normally the glycosidic bonding takes place at this position now if we take look at the other structure that is the tetracyclic steroidal structure which are also known chemically as the steroidal saponins they have a basic steroidal structure which is having three uh, six membered rings and the fourth ring is five membered ring after that you can see that the arrangement is generally a type of a, a furan ring can be present or a pyran ring can be attached however they are not counted in the basic structure the basic structure is only this four rings initial rings which i have labeled as a b and c d again this is the point where the glycosidic linkage takes place and the example for this drug uh, for this category is dioscorea which is producing diosgenin and due to the steroidal structure it has its application in the synthesis of various steroidal hormones which are synthesized in the labs the chemical test for steroidal uh, for this saponin alkaloids one is the hemolytic test where if we put a drop of this saponin on a smear of the blood the rbc get ruptured which can be viewed under the microscope the second is the foam test where we put the drug around 1 gram drug in 10 to 10 uh, 20 ml of the water and shake it and if the frothing remains for 60 to 120 minutes then we then the saponins are present then we can also go for the test like for the steroidal and terpenoidal uh, glycosides like the liberman burchett test where in the alcoholic extract if we evaporate it completely to dryness and add chloroform after which we add few drops of acetic anhydride and few drops of h2so4 from the side of the test tube then a junction is pre uh, formed and the, uh, the, there is the formation of violet to blue colored ring at the junction of the two liquids which indicates the presence of the steroidal moiety another test salkowski test it is similar to liberman burchett test only the difference being that we are not going to add acetic and hydride and the result is that the, there is a formation of yellow colored ring at the junction of the two liquid which turns red after 2 minutes which is indicating the presence of a steroidal moiety the third test that is the antimony trichloride test again we will take the alcoholic extract evaporate it to dryness add chloroform and then we will add saturated solution of antimony trichloride along with chloroform and 20% acetic anhydride so we have the formation of pink color and this particular pink color on uh, heating it shows the presence of steroids and terpenoids the next category is that of the cardiac glycosides so generally the cardiac glycosides have both beneficial and toxic effects on the heart so they have to be used very judiciously cardiac steroids are uh, widely used in the treatment of congestive heart failure and for the treatment of atrial fibrillation and flutter these drugs all act by affecting the availability of the intracellular calcium for the myocardial contraction or increasing the sensitivity of the myocardial contractile protein so it helps in the you can say forceful contraction of the heart so when the heart is in an enlarged state it brings it back to its 
activity. And the main glycosides present, cardiac glycosides are digitalis, one of the widely used drug for the production of digoxin. Scylla, which is also known as the jungli pyars, canair, and then we have stropanthus. So, these drugs all have the chemical constituents which act as a cardiac glycoside. And these cardiac glycosides can be classified into two categories, one is the cardinolides and then the bufadenolides. So, cardinolides are basically the 23 carbon containing compound which have one 5 membered lactone ring with a single double bond in the lactone ring. While bufadenolides are 24 carbon containing compounds which have a 6 membered lactone ring and 2 double bonds are there inside the lactone ring. Cardinolides are generally majority cases they are found in plants while bufadenolides are in majority found in animals and the first time it was identified uh, in the toad skin. Okay, the frog skin and it was no, named as bufalin from where the name bufadenolide has been given. Okay. And here in the on the top you can see this is the basic steroidal structure. We have a lactone moiety making it cardinolide or bufadenolide and here at the third position we have the attachment of the sugar moiety giving it a structure of a glycoside. So, this is one of the most important category of the cardiac glycosides and the chemical test for this cardiac glycosides first is the keller kiliani test, one of the most important tests for cardiac glycosides. So, we will take the alcoholic extract and we will uh, add basically uh, equal amount of water and then 0.5 ml of strong lead acetate solution. We will shake it and filter it. The filtrate is then extracted with equal amount of chloroform. Then the chloroform extract is completely evaporated to dryness and whatever residue is remaining that is dissolved in 3 ml of glacial acetic acid followed by few drops of ferric chloride solution. The resultant solution is then transferred to a test tube containing already containing 2 ml of concentrated sulfuric acid. So, now it is observed a reddish brown layer is formed which turns into bluish green after standing due to presence of digitoxose. So, this killer kiliani test helps in identifying the digitoxose present in the cardiac glycosides. The second test is the Balget test. In Balget test, we take a thick section of the leaf of digitalis or any other drug and to this we will add sodium picrate solution. So, we see the formation of yellow to orange color in the presence of these a glycoside, a glycones or even the glycosides. Then we have the Legal's test. So, in legal test again we will take the alcoholic extract and uh, add equal amount of water, then we will add 0.5 ml of lead acetate solution so that the tannins are precipitated. Once the tannins are precipitated we will extract the water solution with chloroform and then we will evaporate the chloroform extract completely. So, now we have the residue and in this residue we will add 2 ml of pyridine along with sodium nitroproside again 2 ml and after this we will add the sodium hydroxide solution to make it completely alkaline in nature. So, it leads to the formation of pink color in the presence of glycoside or a A glycone moiety. Next test is the 3 phi dinitro benzoic acid test also known as the DNP test. Here to the alcoholic solution of a drug few drops of sodium hydroxide is added followed by 2 percent solution of 3 5 dinitro benzoic acid. So, there is a formation of pink color showing the presence of the cardiac glycosides. Next is the anthraquinone glycosides. So, these anthraquinone glycosides are generally having this basic structure. So, this is basically if I say this is the benzene ring, if I add another ring to it, it becomes the naphthalene ring. And if we add 
one more ring to it, then it becomes anthracene ring. Now, when we add two keto groups to this anthracene ring, it becomes anthraquinone. What does it become? It becomes anthraquinone and generally we have the binding either at the 10th position or at the 7th position for formation of the glycosides. So, these anthraquinone glycosides they generally have a cathartic action, okay. they have the uh, they relieve from constipation, they increase the tone of the smooth muscles in the large intestine because of which the laxative effect is changed uh, is seen. And generally we have the examples like aloe, senna, cascara and rhubarb which are used as the anthraquinone glycosides and the basic skeleton in them is this anthracene ring with two keto moieties at the 9th and the 10th position. The chemical test for this are first is the bond trigger test we, when we take the drug to that we add HCl and after that we will filter to the filtrate we add either carbon tetrachloride or benzene and from the sides we will add equal amount of ammonia. So, if the ammonical layer turns pink then we could say that the, it is a positive bond trigger test. However, for example, alloin it has the C glycoside. Now, when there is a C glycoside breaking of this bond becomes very very difficult because of which we have a negative bond trigger test and for that what is done that before addition of the dilute HCl we have to oxidize it by 5 ml FeCl3 because of which the carbon carbon bond break and we have the A glycone and then after that when we perform the same bond trigger test, we will have a pink color in the ammonical layer. In case we do this test directly, we will always have a negative bond trigger test. Then the flavonoidal glycosides. So, flavonoids we are going to discuss in next class in detail. This category of drugs generally it occurs as a glycoside and the basic ring structure is C6, C3, C6. Examples are it is present in lemon peel and ginkgo biloba. This is the basic ring structure of a flavonoid which we are going to discuss in the next class. The main tests are ammonia test, shinoda test and vanillin hydrochloride test. In, veni, uh, in ammonia test, we will take a filter paper dipped in the alcoholic solution of the drug and we will uh, expose it to ammonia vapor. So, it leads to the formation of yellow spots on the filter paper. In shinoda test, we will take uh, the solution, add magnesium turnings and dilute HCl. It gives the formation of a red color. Sometimes if it is negative, we can use the zinc turning as well. So, in that case, it will gives a deep magenta color. In vanillin hydrochloric test, we take the vanillin hydrochloric solution to that we have the alcoholic extract and it shows the pink color due to the presence of flavonoids. Then we have a coumarin glycosides which are similar to the flavonoidal glycosides and they are basically the benzopyrin derivatives have a aromatic smell and their alcoholic solutions when they are made alkaloin show blue or green fluorescence. Medicinally, coumarin glycosides have been shown to have hemorrhagic, antifungal and anti-tumor activities. Furano coumarins are generally compound, where they are toxic compounds and generally uh, they should be used very, very uh, judiciously. The examples are Soralia and Visnaga. These are few more examples. So, this is the basic ring structure of a furano coumarin and these are the sugar moieties which are attached. So, this is the basic ring structure of a coumarin. It is uh, tested using the FeCl3 test where the alcoholic extract it is mixed with FeCl3 and it leads to the formation of deep green color which is turned yellow on addition of concentrated HNO3. In fluorescence test, we will take the extract, add one um, normal NOH and after that a blue green color is developed. There are few more uh, glycosides like the phenol glycosides, cyanogenetic glycosides, isothiocyanate glycosides, steroidal glycosides, bitter glycosides and al uh, aldehyde glycosides. This is one test for the cyanophoric glycosides where we do the uh, sodium picrate test in a conical flask. We basically impregnate the filter paper with sodium picrate and when it is treated with a cyanophoric alkaloid, the HCN gases turn it into a brick red color. 
So, with this we understand we have understood the definition of glycosides, its various uh, classifications, properties and different chemical constitu uh, chemical uh, test based on the chemical categories. Thank you, thank you very much.